out for a Sunday morning run along the Jordan River in Utah, a jogger makes a grisly discovery. Blood pooled at the foot of a bridge and close by, a single shoe. A helicopter searching the area spots a figure in the river. Police arrive on scene and pull a female body out of the water, beaten beyond recognition, and on her foot, the matching shoe. Our Salt Lake City affiliate KSTU reporting that just the night before, a desperate mother discovered that her daughter Annie was missing. Veronica Kasperzak says that a family argument may have prompted her 15-year-old to leave the house. But when Veronica saw news reports that a body was found near the river, she had a chilling premonition that it was Annie. It was something that you would see being hit by a train. Her dad, Dennis, describing what he saw after identifying his daughter's body. Her lips split and her face flattened, her nose non-existent. But who would viciously and brutally beat this pretty teenager to death? Annie's family is desperate for answers. We do believe that teenagers, friends, somebody knows what happened to Annie that night. And we're just asking him to come forward. Uh, we're not angry. You know, nothing can change, but uh, we can prevent it from happening to somebody else. Police mount a massive search for the killer, even questioning Annie's boyfriend, Darwin Bagshaw. But they soon arrest two other men, via Nua, via Kiti, and Daniel Ferry. Court documents say a witness claimed the two men assaulted and murdered Annie after a party when she allegedly refused Ferry's sexual advances. At a hearing, Ferry maintained his innocence, claiming a drug addict was angry with him and made up the whole story. The two men were soon released and never charged with the murder. Annie wouldn't have any reason to be associated with those people. Then a break. After two years, a tip points in the direction of Grand Junction, Colorado, where cops hone back on Annie's ex-boyfriend, Darwin Bagshaw. Detectives discover a number of calls made between Annie and Bagshaw on the night she disappeared. The calls ended around 8.30 p.m. They also discovered blood on the ex-boyfriend's shoes. Initially, Bagshaw explained the droplets away, saying Annie had a bloody nose. But a friend who initially confirmed Bagshaw's story later admitted he lied to police. The 17-year-old is arrested and extradited to Utah, charged with first-degree felony murder and obstruction of justice. We looked at everything and, and every avenue, and um, with everything that we have, we are confident that we have the suspect in custody for Annie's murder. It feels incomplete to say that it is any sort of a relief because it does not change what happened. Police records say on that dark night, Annie and Bagshaw met up by the river where allegedly Annie told her 14-year-old boyfriend she was pregnant with his baby. The records reveal that after hearing the news, an enraged Bagshaw lost his temper and beat her to death with a shovel, then dumped her body in the water. The injuries and everything that she suffered and, and went through, it just was unimaginable that someone could do that to somebody else. Fox 13 reports that an autopsy later revealed a stunner. Annie was never pregnant. Her family wonders if it was only an attention-seeking ploy. The 15-year-old died from blunt force trauma to the head. Guilty, Your Honor. Here's Darwin Bagshaw in court, standing before a judge, admitting to beating, killing, then dumping the body of Annie Kasperzak in the river. Are you pleading guilty to the charge because you're guilty of it? Yes, Your Honor. But even with a guilty plea, Annie's family is furious that for over two years, while police feverishly investigated Annie's murder, Bagshaw was living his life under the radar in Colorado. He had every single day he could have come forward and said, I'm sorry, I did it. And he didn't take that responsibility. At the sentencing, Annie's family spoke to their daughter's killer about how he's torn their lives apart. May you feel sadness. May you feel loss. May your tears heal your soul. What he never understood is that it wasn't just Annie's life that he took, he took ours. He took all of our life and her light that was in it that was a part of our lives. And then Darwin Bagshaw addressed Annie's family. 
I'm very sorry for everything that's happened and I want to apologize for, to Annie's family and to my family and to everybody in court today for putting everybody through this. The defense argued that since Bagshaw Darwin was just 14 when he committed the crime, he should be sentenced as a juvenile. The judge disagreed, sentencing him as an adult. A terrible crime uh, deserves a serious sentence. And here we have uh, about the worst crime that one can possibly imagine. Darwin Bagshaw will now spend the next 15 years to life in prison. Little consolation for the Kasperzak family who have lost their precious Annie forever.